Hi everyone, and welcome to the second half of my initial review of the Sony ECM W2 B2 wireless microphone system. I know I've been working with this system for about three weeks now, and I still can't say it properly. <laughs> but it should be ECM W2BT wireless microphone system. In this video, I will go over the components of this wireless microphone system and give my positive and negative feedback on what I saw with it during my two to three weeks time with it. All right, let's get this started. I should have mentioned this in the first half of this video, but everything was recorded in digital audio and not analog mode. I'm planning to do a video where I just use analog mode for this system, and let's see if there really is a difference in audio quality between the two different modes. So let's start with the receiver first. At the top here we have the link indicator and power charge indicators. The link indicator basically tells you the status of the connection between the receiver and the transmitter. The power indicator is for the status of your battery. If we go to the right side here we have uh, two indicators. We have one that allows an analog or digital selection and then we have a indicator here for three different settings so receiver mix and mic when you select just the receiver option this will just record audio from here if you use the mix option it will record audio from here and the transmitter and if you just switch to the mic you will just record audio from the transmitter if we go to the bottom here, we see the microphone. Now there isn't a windscreen available for this one, so you might have to make your own or try not to record in windy conditions. All right, go to the left side. We have a micro USB A port and we have a mic out port as well. I believe you can connect a microphone here too. Now most of us, yeah, you can see that it's a bit difficult to open these up but then again my fingernails are short now most of us use of course USB-C but in 2021 a lot of the lower end Sony products came with micro USB-A so this is just something uh, for its time but a lot of products afterwards have been released with USB-C and on the bottom we have the multi-shoe digital audio interface now digital audio interface like I mentioned only works with certain cameras and on the Sony website for this microphone, it does show which cameras can use it. At the top here, you have the same indicators as the receiver but you also have the microphone and then you have a jack here you can input uh, an external microphone if you go to the right side of the transmitter you also have a micro usb a charging port uh, you also have two indicators of course the on and off switch that's self-explanatory and then you have the att levels 0 10 and 20 decibels I'm assuming most of you will use this for vlogging and uh, recording your voice. So Sony and a lot of sources recommend using 10 decibels. Okay, nothing at the bottom. And if we go to the left side, yep, nothing at all also. And for the bottom, you get a nice sturdy stiff clip for clipping onto your lapel, your belt, or your pants. So if you want to use an external microphone instead of the transmitter here, you can use something like the Sony ECM LV1. And according to Sony, this gives you better audio quality 
compared to the transmitter. I'm going to tell you from personal experience, it does not clip or distort at the 10 decibel setting here on the transmitter. In some situations, the transmitter will do that. But it's very easy to attach to this. Just take the jack and insert it here and you are ready to go. You would just clip this onto your belt or pants and then of course this portion will hook up onto your lapel or somewhere close to your mouth. Hopefully you can hear me right now, but I'm gonna show you another way you can position the Sony ECM LV-1. You can also have it vertically just like this. Now, what if you're wearing a shirt like mine and you can't wear a tie or a jacket to place it like Sony recommends? You would position the lapel microphone here in the center of your sternum, just like this. A tip that I learned for proper placement of a lapel microphone is you take your hand like this, spread your thumb and pinky finger out. You put your thumb towards the corner of your mouth and where your pinky finger is, is where the lapel microphone should be sitting. You can see this is a bit high, but of course I'm restricted by the type of shirt that I'm wearing. Now this ECM LB1 is hooked up to the transmitter. And as you know from part one of this video, you cannot adjust the audio levels from your camera. You would have to change the type of shirt that you're wearing so that you can adjust the lapel microphone here to avoid clipping and distortion or you're going to have to use the ATT levels from the transmitter. Right now I am using the negative 10 decibel setting on the transmitter and it doesn't look like there is any clipping or distortion according to the audio levels from my camera. So this can be a hassle for some people who are used to just adjusting the audio levels quickly from the camera but uh, this is what Sony decided to go with and uh, that's what we have to deal with. Now I'll go over some positive things uh, for this wireless microphone system. One of the great things about using this system is it's very lightweight. It practically feels like nothing in my hands. I know it may look a bit bulky here, but don't let that deceive you. You put this on your camera or you put this on your lapel or belt and you really won't feel anything. That's how amazingly light this setup is. So if you are somebody who likes to do a lot of walking or running type uh, action videos or vlogging, I highly recommend using this system. Now, I will admit I have never used any of the other wireless microphone setups. So if you have and you have maybe used this one too, please leave in the comments if there really is an advantage of using this one over the others. The second positive thing about this setup is it's very easy to set up. Unfortunately, I'm using my camera now. I can't show you how quick and simple it is to do, but uh, hopefully I can do a B-roll and you can just see how fast it is to set this up. The other third positive thing about this is there are no wires. So traditionally I've used either a lapel microphone or something like this Rode video mic and you do have to deal with uh, cables. On the ZV-U10 the microphone port is in a okay location but if you're using things such as a cage or maybe other accessories it does get in the way. I know it might seem like a minor thing, but it really does make a difference when you're doing uh, walking vlogs to have no cables. The fourth positive thing about this is the audio quality. It's not that bad. Some reviewers talk about it's not that great, but I think the intended purpose of this is when you're vlogging on the go, you just need something that is lightweight, portable, and uh, very easy to use. Having awesome audio quality might be secondary to this. 
don't expect studio quality audio, but it is a lot better than using most of the lapel microphones at the consumer level, and of course from your camera. And probably I would say the most positive thing about this system is freedom of movement and the distance that you can use it at. Now you will see a video that shows the capability of its distance and compared to other wired microphones, yeah, it's, it's a big difference. I'll know later when I upload it to my computer and uh, I can listen to it and see if uh, it did pick it up 200 meters out. In the future, I'll do a more thorough test to really push this uh, microphone setup. But right now, I'm very happy with it just because of the freedom that I have when doing my vlogs. It's, it's amazing. All right, let's go over some negative things about this wireless microphone system. I did mention one of the positive things about this is the lightweight, but on the other hand, it does feel kind of cheap. And this is something that I noticed from a lot of Sony products from 2021. The quality is questionable, and I'm telling you from experience, from having owned the Sony ZV-1 and the WF-1000XM4 earbuds compared to previous models it just feels like the quality took a dive now this is during the pandemic so I know things were a little bit tougher when it came to manufacturing so it may have been a bit more difficult to get materials and maybe the time to produce these were not as abundant so just be ready for that it does feel cheap and I don't know about its durability yet. I've only had it for a few weeks. So I will do a long-term review later on for this setup to see if it will survive my type of content creation. Second and negative thing about this is the painted on indicators. Don't expect it to last very long. It will wear off, so you will have to memorize uh, the settings. I know this wears off because I have some other Sony products with the same type of marking and yeah, with your sweat and oils and other elements that this gets exposed to, it will wear off. So for something at this price point, it's kind of disappointing that it's just painted on. At least they could have imprinted indicators into each device and painted over it. That would have been fine. but. That's not the case. Once again, this came out in 2021. The third negative thing about this is the covers here. Uh, they're kind of difficult to take off and they are cheap. They feel like they could break off. And I noticed this on the Sony ZV-1. They use the same type of covers. I uh, just saw a video on the ZV-1 Mark II. I think they are still using the same covers. So Sony must have a lot of confidence in these lasting for a while. Some reviewers have said they've broken them off. I can see it happening because they are a bit difficult to remove. Uh, but be aware, uh, it is using this type of cover and once again this came out in 2021 <laughs> so yeah the quality is a bit questionable for this the fourth negative thing about this is the switches so you may have seen it when I was describing them earlier that they don't go into the slot that you want correctly so there is a click here but you have to be very gentle if, if you push it normally you might overshoot what you want to get so you can see it kind of sits in between the uh, analog and off uh, option here that's one of the frustrating things about this is you spend some time trying to get the switch into the proper indicator and for something that sony markets as uh, very easy to use uh, no this does not make it very easy to use so be aware of that you may have to play around with the switches just to get the indicator that you want the fifth negative thing with this setup is the battery indicator i mentioned earlier that you can check the status of your battery levels by this uh, indicator here 
you basically have to go off of the quoted nine hours from Sony and this indicator here. Now I've been using this for a couple weeks and I've been vlogging with it for uh, two to three hours at a time and I didn't really worry about uh, battery being drained and when I came back to charge it, it charged up pretty quick which means it didn't drain a lot of battery. Once again, be aware of that. You don't have an actual uh, percentage to show how much battery is remaining. I know some of the wireless microphone systems out there do have that, but unfortunately, once again, this was 2021 and Sony was cutting corners. I'm guessing Sony will never want me to be their ambassador from always bashing on their products. But you know, I've been using Sony products since I think 2008, 2009. Yeah, I've been, I've been with them for a while. All right, the sixth negative thing that some of you may find uh, annoying is, I already pointed this out, is micro USB A charging. So I'll repeat it again. This came out in 2021 <laughs> and a lot of the products had it. So uh, just be aware of that. And the seventh negative thing that I saw with this setup is with my ZVE-10, I don't know about the other uh, cameras, when using a cage, uh, I cannot use this microphone system. When you insert it into the cold shoe here, uh, this portion here will not clear the camera body. So that is something you have to think about. Now, some of you may not use a cage, but if you use a ZVE-10, and you know that is a very small camera compared to the Alpha 6000 series and you have a hand as big as mine, uh, you are constantly worrying about dropping that camera. So using a cage like this from small rig, especially with this nice uh, thick grip, it gives you confidence uh, that you will not drop your camera. So be aware of that. You cannot use a cage unless it doesn't have this portion here uh, with this wireless microphone system. And I saved the best complaint for last. And this is probably the worst thing about the system. It drains battery very quickly. It's crazy. All right, so that last scene probably took me about five to eight minutes total to record. And what I noticed from using this microphone setup is it drains the battery really fast. So my battery was around 100% when I filmed that last scene. And by the time I was done with it, it was at 67%. So my plan was to come to another location and test this microphone out some more. But as I mentioned earlier, I noticed that the battery was draining really fast. So. Unfortunately for this video, I'm gonna have to wrap it up and I need to find out why is my camera draining battery so fast with this wireless microphone setup. Now, I thought at first, perhaps it's because of my camera overheating because I do record in 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, temperatures plus consistently and I was thinking that was causing the battery drain, uh, but that is not the case. I also thought perhaps it was just my battery. Uh, I did pick up my ZVE-10 used, and uh, I don't really know how old it is, and the battery could be old. So I ordered a new Sony battery, and well, it does the same thing. It drains battery very quickly. So I always point this out in my videos. You can't have it all, okay? Every single system that you use, will have its advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage of this, of course, is the light weight and ease of use, and the drawback is the quick battery discharge. So you will have to bring a minimum of two to three batteries if you're gonna be doing uh, recording outdoors. That is the positive and negative things I saw with this system after about two weeks of use. That's it, everyone, for this video. I hope you found the information useful. I know it was a bit long, but there was a lot of things to go over for this particular wireless microphone system. Please hit that like button. It helps get this video out to more viewers. And please, if you haven't done so, subscribe. It would really help me out. I am trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. I've mentioned this several times in my past videos. I only do this part-time. I do it during my spare time. So please, I would really appreciate it if you do subscribe. 
Until next time, stay safe, keep learning, aloha.